Just about everybody on Earth is on social media these days, so you've got to assume that checking your favorite platform is totally normal. But studies have shown that the average internet user spends 135 minutes on social media every day. Two and a half hours is a lot of time to devote to Twitter or Facebook. Just think about how much you can get done if you were doing something more productive. And, of course, that number describes the average person. But social media addiction is becoming more common every day. There's no sense of how much time people with a genuine addiction are spending staring at their screens. But why are they so addictive? Who is responsible for this? And what can you do about it? Of course, I'm not saying that social media is inherently bad. It can be great for connecting with people. It helps us spread information that would never have been seen in the past. And it sometimes really helps people who are in trouble. But it also has a dark side. And not just in the form of internet trolls and bullies. In this video, we're going to explore why social media is so addictive and what can be done if you think you're addicted. Or if you want to cut down on the time you spend on your favorite platform. To make matters a little harder, there's no clear or official definition for social media addiction. Usually, it's characterized by three things. Excessive concern over social media, an uncontrollable urge to use social media, and devoting so much time and effort to social media that it impairs other important areas of life. But these things can be difficult to identify and define because they often look different in each person. However, we do know that social media use can lead to behavioral addiction and is both mentally and physically addictive. Experts estimate that 10% of Americans are probably genuinely addicted to social media. However, they admit the actual percentage is probably higher. And if you think that social media addiction isn't as bad as other forms of addiction, you're wrong. It actually looks a lot like just about any substance abuse addiction. It includes mood modification, which is a term for how you feel good or appear happier when you engage with your addiction. It leads to an increase in tolerance, which means the more you use it, the more you'll want to use it. It does lead to withdrawal symptoms if you stop using it, and addicted people are inclined to relapse into their old patterns after they've stopped using it. Sounds frighteningly similar to drug or alcohol addiction, doesn't it? The problem doesn't end there. Studies have linked social media addiction with low self-esteem and negative mental health. Social media provides people who experience these problems with social interaction and other personal boosts that they don't get in real life. In those cases, it's easier to engage with social media more and more. It starts causing problems for their real-life relationships, work or school responsibilities, and even physical health. This can make their mental health problems worse, and that causes them to engage with social media even more. And that again makes them feel increasingly isolated and unhappy. Eventually, it becomes a vicious cycle of addiction that's really hard to come back from. And that's not the only way social media can harm people's mental health. You know how everyone's life looks great on social media? Most people realize that's because of all the filters and how we edit the boring bits of our lives when posting something. But if you're already suffering from low self-esteem and other mental health problems, seeing everyone apparently living a perfect life can be pretty bad. Recent studies have found that people who use social media frequently are more likely to believe that other users are happier and more successful than they are. This can lead to feelings of jealousy and worthlessness, or it can create even more severe mental health issues, such as depression, anxiety, social anxiety disorder, or even suicidal thoughts. And this is a surprisingly common problem with one study from the University of Stanford revealing that 50% of users feel that social media makes their lives worse. That's a lot of people who should probably be avoiding social media, but keep checking their phones anyway. Have you experienced anything like this with your social media use? Let us know in the comments and make sure to tell us what you do to manage it. So all that is pretty bad, and since 56% of people say they're afraid they'll miss something if they don't check their social media feeds all the time, it's likely to get worse. But why exactly is social media so addictive? It looks like it all comes down to dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical naturally produced by your body. It creates feelings of pleasure and is one of the neurotransmitters that control your brain's reward center. Every time you get a notification, like, or comment, your brain is flooded with dopamine. 
making you feel good. And that's not the only way social media rewards us with this pleasurable chemical. Dopamine is also released when we talk about ourselves. This also happens when you're talking to people face to face about yourself. However, it's estimated we talk about ourselves 30 to 40% of the time in person. That's reasonable, but when you're posting online, it's all about you. So 80% of your time there is spent telling everyone about you and getting yet another dopamine hit in the process. This is intentional. The companies who own these platforms design them to produce the same neural circuitry as gambling or recreational drugs. And we all know how addictive those are. The reward area of your brain loves the dopamine rush you get from these sites, and it affects your decisions. Neuroscientists have discovered that these sites cause your brain's reward center to produce the same chemical reaction as cocaine. That's why social media addiction is considered physically addictive instead of only psychologically addictive. If you've ever wondered why you feel so great every time you get a like, there's your answer. But the effects of the dopamine don't last very long. Before you know it, you're picking up your phone again in the hopes of seeing another notification. You don't know it, but it's all because your brain is looking for another dopamine hit. There's nothing wrong with dopamine under normal circumstances. A dopamine release that comes from achieving something or talking to friends is a good thing. It's there as a little reward to encourage you to keep doing things to improve your life. But social media is a little different. It requires very little effort to post something that will get you a few likes. The easily accessed and constant positive reinforcement eventually rewires your brain making you seek out more and more interactions on your favorite platform. This is even more problematic in children. Researchers shows that children who have frequent access to social media from a young age display severely stunned social interaction skills. And 23% of children who are on social media more than three hours per day have symptoms of severe mental health problems. They develop social anxiety, high rates of depression, and negative body image that can turn into eating disorders. They even have less empathy and compassion for their peers compared to children without so much social media access. Obviously, this is definitely not a good thing. But there's good news. Most adults can engage with social media without developing these negative responses. But if you do suspect that you might have an addiction to social media, the condition is very treatable. You can start by turning off sound notifications and limiting your screen time. You can do this any way you choose. Maybe set a timer so you can only check your notifications only once an hour. It helps to unfollow all of your guilty pleasures too. A clever trick to limit your usage is to delete your favorite social media apps from your phone so they're not as easy to access and you won't get notifications popping up all the time but you can still use them on your PC. A new hobby can also help limit your screen time by keeping you busy. If you're still finding it hard not to check your phone before bed, leave it in another room. If all this is too hard, that's okay. If you have a more serious addiction, you may need professional help, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having someone help you as you step away from it. But if you wanna be bold, you can also try a full social media detox just for a while or delete all your accounts forever. Some people say it's the best thing they ever did. Do you have more tips for people struggling with social media addiction? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Either way, now that you know what causes social media addiction, it's much easier to avoid becoming addicted. Hopefully, after watching this, you'll know how to help yourself or your friends who are experiencing a social media addiction and stop it from ever happening again. But remember not to be too hard on yourself. You're only human. How you react is what really counts.